Hello, what's up guys? This is Mitch. Uh, this guide is gonna be on Outlaw in 10.2. And before we start, I just want to emphasize that although the rotation of Outlaw is already quite well developed at this point, but since it's still early in the tier, there might or might not be new findings later. But if anything, it's just either gonna be mid-maxing, or because of specific talents, nerfs, or buffs. Uh, if that happened, I will keep those updated and pin that in the comment section. So, let's start. For builds, every single one of them is gonna take crack shot, and they're split into two different playstyles. One of them is gonna take hit an opportunity, and then the other one is not gonna take it, but it's gonna take keep it rolling instead. I'm just gonna call them Ho and non Ho. In single target, both are seeming fairly close. Your stats is gonna influence that for a little bit, especially Haze. Best way to figure it out is doing on your own sims. On the other hand, non Ho with Keep It Rolling is seeming noticeably higher in AoE. However, keep in mind that Keep It Rolling suffers more from downtime. So when taking keep rolling in M+, you might want to consider whether your tank is going to chain a lot, how close are the packs, how much downtime are there, are you gonna, or I don't know, how much RP are there, or are you going to take a fucking elevator after a pack, stuff like that. And here are all the talents for all the builds. Although swapping death for heavy hitter in a talent tree te are technically the same, they're seeming fairly close, but death is making Blade Fury an extremely energy efficient global. So on launch day, when we have like no tier and no haze at all, even Ho will probably seem very well with this talent. Now let's talk about some of our core talents. The combination of Crackshot, Ace, subterfuge and underhand which extends our subterfuge window pretty much shapes the core of outlaw's rotation which is our crack shot window every time we use vanish or dance and obviously with crack shot talented our goal is to send as many between the eyes as possible in those windows and then thanks to the combination of these talents our uptime on subterfuge and dance combined it is roughly 40% and our uptime on AR is roughly like 90%. And our damage pattern is going to be cycling in between a crack shot window and downtime out of stealth. And again, they're gonna take roughly 40% and 60% of our combat timer respectively. For finishing rules, first we wanna spend our ER charges both inside and outside of our crackshot window. And then outside of our crackshot window, we want to finish at 6 to 7 combo points. And lastly, we want to finish at 5 to 7 combo points inside of our crackshot window. For Outlaw, we have 3 finishers, Between the Eyes, Slice and Dice, and this patch. For the priority, we want Between the Eyes if your crit buff is not active, or we are in a crack shot window, or vanish remaining cooldown is bigger than 45 seconds, and your dance cooldown is bigger than 12 seconds. We're doing that because we want to make sure between the eyes is available when vanish or dance are off CD. We never ever want to delay using vanish or dance because between the eyes is on CD. Followed by between the eyes, we want to slice and dice if it has less than 11 seconds remaining. And lastly, this patch. And here are two examples. In the first screenshot on the top, my between the eyes was off CD, but then my vanish was still on a minute and five seconds cooldown, while my dance was on a 42 seconds cooldown. So in this case, I should be using my between the eyes. However, 
in the second screenshot at the bottom, my between the eyes was off CD, but then my vanish was going to be back up in 3 seconds. So in this case, I will 100% want to hold my between the eyes so that it's going to be available the moment vanish is off CD again. Now let's talk about how do we build combo points outside of our crackshot window with whole builds. Our highest prior should be using AR when we are at 0 to 2 combo points, followed by Ghosty Strike on CD. Do be aware that Ghosty Strike is not on global, so technically you should be and you can use it with something else at the same time. And then we want to use Blade Fury on CD as long as there is more than 5 targets and you have Death Talented. Then we want to use Ambush when there is an Audacity proc, followed by Pistol Shot with Fender Hammer, and lastly, Sinister Strike. Due to the finishing rules that we discussed earlier in the video, and because we are not in our Crackshot window, as long as we are not at 6 or 7 combo points, we should be following this priority list and build as long as their conditions are met. And to build combo points outside of your crackshot window with non-hole builds, we want to AR at 0 to 2 combo points, Ghosty Strike on CD, Blade Fury when there is 5 or more targets and you have Death Talented, followed by ER on CD, Fender Hammer at 0 to 3 combo points, and lastly, Sinister Strike. Do be aware that with non-hole builds, we would never ever want to cast Ambush. And again, as long as we are not at 6 to 7 combo points since we are outside of our crackshot window, we should follow this priority list and build combo points. For building combo points inside of your crackshot window with any hole builds, the highest prior again is going to be pressing AR at 0 to 2 CP, Ghosty Strike on cooldown, following by Blade Fury on CD if there is 5 or more targets, plus you have Death Talented, and then spending Fender Hammer at 0 to 1 combo point if we have Broadside active, and then lastly, Ambush. And then the priority of building combo points inside Crackshot window for non-hole builds is essentially exactly the same as how do we want to do it outside of our crackshot window. For Rota Bones, um, there's a couple of things in our kit that interacts with it. The first thing is obviously Rota Bones itself, and then as well as Count the Odds. Rota Bones and Count the Odds are the two sources that we get our buffs from. And then we have load the dice. It's basically when after you press AR, your next roll is gonna guarantee at least two buffs. And then we have keep it rolling, which extends all the buffs that we currently have by 30 seconds. And then lastly, our four piece. Our four piece is gonna pick one of the buff that we currently have and extend it whenever we press roll the bones. Before we move on to talking about reroll logic, which is which basically means when do we want to reroll, uh, there's something I want to clarify before we move on with a little bit more um, visualization. Uh, so first, for rotor bones, when you press rotor bones, let's just disregard our four piece for now. Let's just assume we don't have the four piece. For Rota Bones itself, whenever you press it, say like, um, sorry, like that. So these are the possible buffs that we, you know, that we we can get from pressing Rota Bones, like Brass Eye, True Bearings, Golden Crossbow, uh, Ruler's Precision, Brave Treasure, and Grand Melee. So if I press Rota Bones. This row the bones, it's only ever gonna give me either one buff, two buffs, or five buffs. Three or four and six. 
it's not possible. Um, so let's just say I have no buffs at all. I have zero buffs. I press row the bones. And this roll is either going to give me 1, 2, or 5 buff. Let's say this one is going to give me 1 buff. It's going to give me a broadside. I'm going to having end up having broadside. Let's just assume like, the, oh, this roll picks broadside. So I'm going to end up having broadside. Simple. If it decided to give me like broadside plus GM, let's just say. I use green like that. Then I'm going to having... I'm gonna end up having broadside plus GM. Pretty straightforward. Um, and then for loaded dice, it simply makes your next roll to guarantee at least two, in which means if you have loaded dice active, this one is out of the equation. So if I press roll the bones with loaded dice, I'm either gonna get two or five. Um, this is pretty straightforward as well, and I think I do have a clip for that. Uh, so right here, I have nothing. I have no buffs. This is where I track my buffs, like at the bottom here. Doesn't matter which one is which for now. It's not very important at this point. Uh, but nothing. I press roll. Boom. I get one buff. Just like that. However, if we add our four piece into the equation, uh, like this. Let's just assume I have, again, I have no buff at all. If I have no buff and I press row the bones, Let's just say without loaded dice. So I'm not gonna ever gonna get one, two, or five. And since our four piece extends whatever buff what that we currently have, and in this case, there's nothing for it to extend. So in this case, there our four piece is not doing anything at all. So it doesn't influence our role if we have no buff active. So if I press row the bones without loaded dice here, I'm either gonna get one, two, or five, just like the, the last time. However, if I have raw side, let's just say I have raw side up. Maybe uh, I'll do it like this. I have raw side up already, and then. When I press row the bones, the first thing the game is going to do, it's going to decide on a buff to extend. In this case, broadside. Because broadside is going to get extended by a four piece, so I'm going to at least get broadside. And then at the same time, my row the bones is going to decide on what buff it's gonna, it is going to give me. However, because broadside has already been extended by my four piece, so in this roll of bones, broadside is actually out of the equation. It is never gonna pick a buff that got extended by my four piece. So if this roll of bones decided to give me two buffs, let's say, oh, it's gonna give me two bearing and GM then I'm gonna end up having two bearing GM plus the broadside that got extended by a four piece. So I'm gonna end up having three buffs, if that makes sense. And let's do it one more time, all right? Let's say you are very lucky. For example, you have broadside active. Let's just say you have, let's do something else. You have broadside and you have two bearing already. And you are re-rolling with loaded dice active. 
this is in the equation as well. So when you press row the bones, the first thing that's gonna happen is, I mean, they, they happen basically at the same time, but your four piece is gonna decide one buff to extend. Let's just say this time it's choosing two bearing. So two bearing is gonna be right there. It's gonna stay. And since true bearing has been chosen to be extended, so it is not going to be one of the options when you press row the bones. And since we have loaded dice, this row the bones is going to guarantee us at least two. So let's just assume it gives us two buffs. Let's just say it's going to give us BT and GM. So we're gonna end up having BT plus GM plus two bearing that's, that got extended by a four piece. Um, just like this. And here's like an example. So um, I had one buff right here and then Right here is where I track my loaded dice. I have my loaded dice active. So the next time I roll, since I only have one buff, this buff is gonna guarantee to be extended by my four piece. And on top of that, my loaded dice is gonna give me two or five buff. So the next time when I roll, I'm gonna end up having either three buffs or six buffs. Let's see. It's most likely gonna be three. So, row the bones is back up again. And this buff was from count the odds. So if I decided to press it at this moment, one of these are gonna get extended by our, my four piece. And then I'm gonna get two buffs from loaded dice. I'll, but there's a chance there's a chance that the row the bones, say like my four piece is picking the second one on the left. And then say like my row the bones is gonna give me these two, then I'm gonna end up having three buffs. However, if my row the bones decided to give me say like the last two here, this one with seven seconds is gonna be gone. I don't think I rolled here though. No, I didn't. Yeah. There. I had one buff, load the dice, roll the bones. Boom. This buff got extended by my four piece, and I got two new ones. There. Uh, and then for count the odds, it's just basically a bunch of buffs that you can potentially get when you are in stealth stance or even not in stealth stance like if you're in stealth stance you have you know you get double the chance and you double the duration so i think right here um yeah i pop dance you see i use my dance dance is right here i use it and i spam my sensor strike and these pink ones are from count the odds pretty much that and then for keep it rolling it's even more straightforward well keep it rolling it's basically it just extends whatever all it extends all the buff that you currently have by 30 seconds so in this situation if I press keep it rolling these three are each gonna get extended by 30 seconds oh like that right here I think it's got blocked by this thingy but then you can see at the back um, I press my keep it rolling so I have 21 seconds left 21 seconds left and two seconds left I press keep it rolling and they go all got extended by 30 seconds um, also keep in mind that your buffs cannot be extended for more than 60 seconds. I mean, 
What I meant is like the duration of each buff cannot exceed 60 seconds. Which basically means say like say like I have like a 39 seconds of broad side. If I press keep it rolling, it's ever it's gonna go up to 60 only. That's the max. And the last thing is, apart from all these, there is actually some very weird, um, a little bit more complicated interaction in terms of the buffs. Uh, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's like super important. Um, if you strictly or simply follow the reroll logic that I'm gonna talk about in a minute, that's gonna be good enough. 99% of the case um, however in case you're curious or you know you actually want to know how it works at the back um, I would try to explain it at the end of the video but it's I it's not necessarily to understand that so let's move on to reroll logic for reroll logic with four piece it is pretty simple we will always want to reroll any single buff and any double buffs when we have loaded dice active. The one exception is when we are using non-hole build and with two buffs and loaded dice active. In this case, we would not want to reroll so we can have more uptime on broad side. On top of that, we want to avoid spending a global on rotor bones during our crack shot window. So if we are about to vanish, or dance, and our buff's duration is less than 7 seconds, then we would want to reroll before entering stealth. Lastly, and most importantly, never let our buffs fall off. Clip the buffs with rotor bones at the very 1 or 2 seconds before they expire so we can utilize our 4 piece. Or keep it rolling, we want to press it when we have 4 or more buffs active, as well as we are not under dance. If these two conditions are met, we press it. And then the next question is gonna be, after our, after keep it rolling, when do we want to press roll the bones? Our first roll the bones after keep it rolling has its own very specific rules. There are two conditions. The first one is we want to press it when all the buffs duration is lower or equal to 39 seconds. And the second condition is we have four or less buffs active. If these two conditions are met, we press the row the bones. Now, that raises another question. Why do we have such sp specific rules for our first row the bones after keep it rolling? Here is an example. In this screenshot, I had 16 seconds of true bearing and 16 seconds of Grand Melee, and they were both from Roll the Bones. So if I press keep it rolling at this moment, they're both gonna get extended by 30 seconds, and the new duration is gonna be 46 seconds. Simple. And also, I'm just gonna put a screenshot of my UI here because this is like um, how I track my buffs. I know it's weird. I don't show anything except the duration, but with their position are always fixed. So the first one is always going to be broadside, followed by two bearing, ruler's precision, score and crossbones, bridge treasure, and grand melee. So if you look at the scale, it's like this one is grand melee, and the second one is two bearing, and so on. So before we move on, I want to highlight two things. The first thing is, when we press the Bones, the buffs that we get from it can benefit from existing ones and get Pandemic up to 39 seconds. And we don't need to roll the same buff to benefit from it. For instance, if we have one buff active and we roll a 5 buff, all 5 of them that we get are going to benefit from Pandemic. The second thing is, when we press when we first press roll the bones after keep it rolling all of our existing keep it rolling buffs are either gonna stay or get overwrite 
and they will not get rerolled away. This is not necessarily the whole picture, but they will behave like that 99.9% .9 of the time. The last 1% circumstance where they don't behave like that, it's not because of randomness, but that's a much bigger topic. I'm not gonna bother with that for now. So just keep these two things in mind. The first thing is, buffs can get pandemic, and two, existing buffs will stay when we press road bones for the first time after keep it rolling. With these two things in mind, let's go back to example. So right here, I have two keep it rolling buffs with 40 sec 46 seconds of duration. At this moment, if I press Rota Bones, which is my first Rota Bones after my keep it rolling, and if that Rota Bones give me a broadside, I'm gonna have a 39 seconds of broadside because of pandemic which is this one and the rest of my buffs which are my existing ones which are these two true bearing and grand melee they're gonna stay however if that rota bones let's say it didn't give me broadside let's say it's giving me one of my existing buffs for example true bearing what's gonna happen is I will get the 39 seconds of true bearing because of pandemic and that 39 seconds true bearing is going to override my existing 46 seconds true bearing and my grand melee will stay this is and this is what I'm gonna end up having and this means we straight up lost 7 seconds of my true bearing for nothing so if we follow the two rules that I mentioned earlier regarding when to press our first row the bones after keep it rolling, in the best case scenario, which is this one, we're gonna get new buffs that we, that we are missing. But in the worst case scenario, where we roll an existing buff, it is just gonna get override with the same duration. And after pressing that specific row the bones after keep it rolling, we just play our buffs like normal. Lastly, the reason that we only want to row the bones after keep it rolling when we have four or less buffs is because when we have more than four buffs, it is just not worth the global. To visualize this better, here's a clip. So these are my buffs trackers. And then you see the words here, this buff is broadside, two bearing, ruler's precision, and so on. So at this moment, I had two buffs from Rota Bones, uh, two bearing, and Grand Melee. So at 16 seconds, which is right here, I press my keep it rolling. Look at my GCD tracker. Boom. I press my keep it rolling. I extended all of them so in this case if I press row the bones again they are always gonna stay or if I roll the same buff if I roll two bearing or grand melee again they're gonna get override and then at the 41 second mark I press my row the bones look at this what happened to this row the bones was I got a double buff with it. It gave me a ruler's precision and a true bearing. And then because true bearing, if we look back a little bit, was a buff that I already had. And that's why it got replaced by a new one. However, because I rerolled early, they didn't drop below 39 seconds left, and I pressed my Rota Bones. That's why this 41 got replaced by a 38. That's why I lost 2 seconds of my 2 bearing value right there. And again, 
hopefully this is gonna help. And this is exactly why we want to follow those two rules when we press row the bones after keep it rolling. And for our opener, it's gonna look like something like this. I know it looks kind of messy, but in fact it's not. So we pre-Blade Fury, Golden Stealth, re-roll the bones, AR, Slice. And then we start building with Sinister Strike or Ambush first, together with Ghosty Strike. Depending on what build you're playing, play your Crackshot window, and then after that, we roll the bones again if needed. And then we build again, build to 6 or 7, vanish between the eyes, and then play our second crackshot window again. And then after that crackshot window, we roll the bones again if the conditions are met. But most of the time, if you rolled here, you're not gonna roll here. So it depends. Sometimes your roll the bones is gonna come back up here, but if not, you're gonna roll it here. And then after a vanish crash shot window, we build to max again, dance, and play our last crash shot window. And then at, if you're talented into keep it rolling, at any point of this whole rotation, if you meet the conditions, you press keep it rolling. And then one more thing, and if we are doing AoE damage with five or more targets, and with Death Talented, instead of pressing Blade Fury before we go in Stealth, we move our Blade Fury from here to here and use it as our first builder. If we go back to the section where I talk about how do we build inside and outside our Crush Out window, all the answers are there and this will also make sense. And then one last thing before we start going into VODs is the reason that we roll the bones before AR in the opener is because if we roll here and AR, after we press AR, we're going to have loaded dice. So in the worst case scenario, if this roll, if our first roll gave, is giving us one buff and then with loaded dice active at this moment, or at this moment, we can consume the loaded dice and guarantee ourselves at least 3 buffs. But obviously, if you got super lucky, you got 5 buffs at the start. On the first roll here, then you don't have to worry about it. You're obviously, you don't want to roll here or roll here. But if you only get 2 buffs from the first roll, then we consume the loaded dice here or here to guarantee ourselves at least 3 buffs. So here's a clip of rotation. Um, and in this clip, I was playing with Nonho, Keep It Rolling, and with Death Talented. And I'm gonna be cleaving 5 target dummies. So this is basically uh, what's on the left hand side is the priority list of building combo points, which I showed you guys earlier in the video. And then for the sake of, you know, easier to understand my UI, I put the names of my buffs like right here in case it's confusing. Right here, right. And then... So, on pole, I should look to go in self, roll, and AR. And again, I'm rolling first before I AR is I want to reserve my loaded dice for my second row of bones so I can guarantee myself at least three buffs um, on my second roll. So here we go. Uh, let's mute this. So I go in stealth and roll. And this at the bottom left corner is where I track my GCDs. Sometimes it bugs out, but most of the time it works. AR slice, then I'm ready. And then 
this in the middle is where I track subterfuge and dance is gonna be here. And then if you look at the list, what do I use to build? Do I have AR? No, I don't. I use it already. So my next step should be go see strike and play fury. Boom. There you go. Play fury, go see strike, build to max. And since I'm in my crash shot window, um, I should look to between the eyes as much as possible. Between the eyes once, I got a proc. Between the eyes two, I didn't get a proc. Now we look. Now we have to build combo points again. We look at the list again. We go from number one all the way to number six. I have no AR, no ghost strike. Blade Fury is still on cooldown. This is my uh, Blade Fury tracker. Uh, the yellow number is the duration of it, and then the white number at the bottom right of it is um, the cooldown. So my next option is ER. Boom. There you go. Uh, these two are toys. You, have, you don't have to worry about these two. These two are just toys that I macroed for fun. Um, so I ER, I land on a CP, enema CP. So I can between the eyes again, and then... Okay, let's go back for a little bit. There you go. I use my ER between the eyes and no proc. Now we look at the go from go look at the list again. No AR, no ghost is right. Blade is still on cooldown. No ER. Do I have Fender Hammer? No, I don't. This is where I track my Fender Hammer stats. I don't. So my last option is Sinus Strike. I Sinus Strike. There. there you go. I land on the Enema Charge. I have one more second on my Subterfuge. I can between the eyes. I have like less than one second of my subterfuge. I can probably squeeze one more in. Boom, there you go. And now I have to build combo points again. No AR, no ghostly strike. Blade Fury is back up again. And then also my Road of Bones is back up again. And now and I'm now out of my crack shot window. So what I should be looking to do is before I enter my second Crack shot window will vanish. I should look to Blade Fury and then roll. Or the other way around. Doesn't matter as much. So I Blade Fury to max. I roll. There you go. That's our guaranteed three buffs. Now I max combo point. My vanish is up, dance is up. We should always look to use dance first. And then for keep it rolling, do I have do I have four buffs? I don't. So I hold it. I vanish between the eyes. Now we have to build again, because I didn't get a prop. No AR, no GS. We just keep going down the list. Do I have Fender Hammer? No, I don't. So I send a strike. 1, 2. I'm at 5 CP, because inside the crash shot window, we want to finish at 5 to 7. So at this point, I should look to finish. i between the eyes. There you go. And then we go through the list again. This time, no AR, no GS, no Blade Fury. No ER, but then I do have pistol shot. And am I at I have Fender Hammer? I have three stacks here. Do am I at zero to three CP? Yes. So I use my pistol shot. There you go. And then five CP. I between the eyes for the proc. I have one second left on my subterfuge. Between the eyes again, and I have to build again. Now if we look at the list. No AR. Again, no AR, no GS. Blade Fury is back up, so I should look to Blade Fury. And then dance. I Blade Fury. I dance. This is my dance. Between the eyes. I got a proc. I should probably look to Between the Eyes again, obviously. Between the eyes. And then no proc. Now we go back to the list. Do I have AR? No. Do I have GS? It's barely up. See if I react to that. I don't remember. Okay, I did. Since it's strike GS. And then I had nothing else. No Fender Hammer. No cooldowns. So since it's strike. I land on the enema charge. So I should between the eyes here. There you go. And then right now Blade Fury is back up again. But look on top of Blade Fury. Do I have GS or AR? I don't. So I Blade Fury. Build to max between the eyes. There you go. And then now I'm out of my crash shot window. 
my between the eyes is off CD. So should I use it? So we have to look at the cooldown of our vanish and dance. Is my vanish cooldown less than 45? Yes. Uh, more than 45, yes. Is my dance cooldown more than 12? Yes. So I should look to build and between the eyes. Oh, also something like that I missed was right here. In my dance window, like, let's go back a little bit. In my last dance window, I had three buffs here. Boom. And then because I between the eyes and my between the eyes sh shot out a dispatch as well, it proc count the odds, it gave me the, my fourth buff. So I instantly keep it rolling as well. There, like right here. Ah, yeah. And then like that. Okay, we come back to here. I should look to build one sinister strike, two sinister strike. Now I'm at four CP with three hander hammer. Should I use it? No, because we only use fender hammer at zero to three and have no other cooldown. So I should keep using sinister strike to build like that. Now I'm a six stack, so Fender, Fender Hammer. So right now I should use between the eyes and then Fender and then Fender Hammer. There you go. Between the eyes. Now look at this. My between the eyes is on 36 seconds cooldown, and my vanish is on 35. Those say they're gone, basically gonna sync up perfectly right now. I'm at one CP, no AR, no GS, no Play Fury, no ER. So do I find a hammer? Yes, I have 6 stacks. And then I am at 1 CP, so I find a hammer like that to 5. I'm at 5 CP. Since outside of our crackshot window, we want to always finish at 6 or 7. So I should look to build again. And we go down the list. I have no cooldowns. You know, AR, GS, play free, ER. Fan a hammer, I don't want to use it because I have more than 3 CP, so I should Sinister Strike. Like this, there you go. To 6, finish. And then I should, and then Blade Fury is back up again. So I should look to Blade Fury first, and then use my Fan hammer. Like that, Blade Fury. Finish. Fan the hammer, there you go. And also, pay attention to the uh, duration of my buffs. All of them are at 45, or at least most of them. So I should look to reroll again, because this, my next roll is gonna be my first roll after my keep rolling. So I should wait until all of them drops below 39 and I reroll. Finish these two, vanish is back up between the ice is up in one second so i built again at 5 cp i built to max again which is fine and then i should look to vanish between the eyes like so i vanish between the eyes and then right now my ar is back up again and then i did make a mistake here I mean, it's not at the end, it's not like the end of the day, but then if you, I think, okay, it was right here. I vanished between the eyes, and then look at my list. My first option is AR on the top left, look at that. My first option should be AR. So I should look to AR between the eyes, and next time when I have to build again, I play Fury. But instead, I think I do it the other way around. Yeah, I play Fury instead, but it's not the end of the day. I play free between the eyes. Got the proc between the eyes again. Now no proc. And then I have to build again. So I should AR and green and use my uh, most green skin, my ghosty strike again. There you go. And then now look at this. All my buffs are below thirty nine. My roll the bones is up. Technically I should be rolling, but I shouldn't. Why? Because I'm inside of my crack shot window. We never want to press roll the bones inside my crack shot window. So what, what I should look to do is I finish my subterfuge window. And then after this two seconds of subterfuge window, I roll. If this buff, if I don't get more buffs, because I have two seconds left of subterfuge, this buff is going to fall off. And then by the time being, I'm going to have four or less 
so I should be rolling. So let's see. Between the eyes, Blade Fury is back up again. Do I have AR or GS? I don't, so I have Blade Fury between the eyes. And then I have to build again. No AR, no GS, no Blade Fury, no nothing. My only option is, my next my next best option is Fender Hammer, which is right here. I fan a Hammer. And then do I use this between the eyes? I should, because look at the cooldown of Vanish and Dance. Now there you go. You see, right after my subterfuge window. Right at this moment. Go back a little bit more, maybe like, it hits zero seconds. I build, and I insta roll, like that. Between the eyes, got a prop. Oh, sorry, I sinister strike. My bad. Between the eyes, I between the eyes because of the cooldown. They're big enough. Finish. Blade Fury is back up again. No AR. No ghosty strike. Blade Fury. I made a mistake here, obviously, then. Look at this. Uh, yeah, I made a mistake there, for sure. But you get the idea, you know. I'd rather tell you guys that I made a mistake than hiding it. At this moment, I should look to Blade, Blade Fury, because Blade Fury is off cooldown. But instead, I think, yeah, I sent a strike instead. So, to, I will try to make the best out of it. So, at this point, if I Blade Fury, I'm gonna waste a lot of combo points. So I should look to build, finish, and then Blade Fury to make the best out of this. But I should have just Blade Fury in the first place. So I'm at 5 combo points, 3 stacks. I don't want to send Fender Hammer, right? So I send this right again. Finish. And okay, something wrong with this. There you go. Finish. Play fury. Finish. And then now look at this. Do I spend my fender hammer? I'm in six stacks. It looks shiny. But then if we look at the list, no AR, no ghost strike. Play fury. I just used it. ER is back up again, so I should use my ER first, and now my between the eyes is back up, but should I use it? No, because Vanish is gonna be back up in 13 seconds, so I should hold it. So I should ER, there you go. This patch, there you go. I have Ghosty Strike again, I should probably Ghosty Strike and Pistol Shot. There we go, right here. And now I Vanish. And it's just basically, you know, everything just repeats itself from th from this point. And then, you know, for the sake of for you guys to see how the flow actually works, I'm gonna play um, the rotation without pausing. And I also made a mistake here as well. I think uh, I panicked. And... I kind of play Fury as full combo points. Just don't do that. I think it's right here. I'm at almost full combo points. I should finish and then play Fury. There you go. I press my play Fury. 
because I'm bad. Yeah, and this is pretty much it. And one last thing before I end this clip is, you see I press my keep it rolling when I was under dance. Keep in mind that keep it rolling is not on your GCD as well as Ghosty Strike. So you are free to use um, keep it rolling in stealth stance. Also this, was, this one was kind of a mistake because I shouldn't be using keep it rolling. I should use it um, after my dance. Uh, so ideally, I should be keep it rolling right now. But luckily enough, I didn't get any county us procs during my dance. Um, the only one that I got, the only proc that I got in my dance was this one, which I extended with my keep it rolling. So technically, I don't lose anything. Even yeah, I don't lose anything. But to play safe, we shouldn't be using keep it rolling under dance. And that's pretty much it. Now, let's talk about some mid-maxing. And remember, any of these mid-max are not required to be done. And they are probably, each of them are worth maybe 0.2 or even 0.1% of your DPS. The first one is maintaining Blade Fury in single target. Thanks to the talent under hand upper hand, and because of such high uptime on the AR in single target, which is roughly 90%, if we press play fury, then our slice and dice is basically always gonna be up. And by doing that, we are technically saving a few globals on casting slice and dice in a fight. On average, you are roughly saving one global in every minute, so it's not that big, but it's something nice if you can afford to do that. And the second thing is, if we are at six combo points and vanish or dance already, instead of finishing at six as usual, we can Sinister Strike to seven and then we use our dance or vanish just to get a slightly higher chance of proccing ace in our dance or vanish window. And the last one is banking fender hammer stacks when we are about to use vanish or dance. For example, if we are at zero to three combo points, instead of using the three stacks of fender hammer, we sinister strike to six or seven, and then we vanish or dance to kind of make sure that we have some stacks to spend to efficiently generate combo points in our crack shot window. However, for example, if we are at zero to three combo points with three stacks, and if our next sinister strike proc, and that sinister strike is gonna bring us to five combo points with six stacks. And then in that case, we would want to Fender Hammer at 5 CP and then use our Vanish on Dance. Now, remember, this is the only time where we would want to violate the rule of using Fender Hammer as soon as possible at 0 to 3 CP and potentially use Fender Hammer at 4 or 5 CP. And again, this is the only case we would ever want to violate that rule. But again, these rules are not required and it's a very, very minimal gain. In this very, very last part of the video, I'm gonna go over some thing that I might have missed in the early parts of the video, or I'm gonna clear up some questions. So pro hoping that you guys will understand the logic of the spec a little bit better. Um, the first thing is, what do I do if I don't have AR on pull to pre-slice and dice? In that case, we would want to ignore slice and dice on pull, play our first crack shot window when we break our stealth, and then we slice, and then we play our second crack shot window. Number two, do I use AR to build combo points if it's already active? The answer is yes, we do, 
because AR is an off-global CD and it's very very efficient on generating combo points and we have very very high uptime on AR anyway so wasting a little bit CD of it, it's fine 3. Why do we never cast Ambush with non ho uh, Because uh, Sinister Strike and Ambush they both can proc count the odds anyway but then the advantage of using Sinister Strike is it can proc fan a hammer however Ambush cannot proc fan a hammer on us so if we use Sinister Strike instead of Ambush we are basically gonna get more potential CP generated Number 4 When do we use Blade Rush? Um, for Blade Rush, we want to use it when we have low energy or basically when we have nothing else to press. I know Blade Rush is our is basic, it's our only tool to do uncapped AoE, but because of the mastery nerf in 10.2 and then also because of how our whole kit interacts, even at uncapped target counts, it is just not worth to spam it on CD at high target counts like last year. Lastly, number 5. Why are we using Fender Hammer for non ho at 0 to 3 instead of any other numbers? Because if we always pistol shot at 0 to 3, then we are guaranteed to not put ourselves in a bad situation. Imagine this if we have 0, if we have 3 combo points and 3 hand of Fender Hammer stacks. If we hold on to it and not use it and we use Sinister Strike instead, in the best case scenario, you would probably Sinister Strike maybe um, 3 times, 4 times, so 6 or 7 CP, and then you finish. We don't lose anything. However, if we have 3 CP, 3 stacks, and we use a Sinister Strike, and that Sinister Strike procced and gave us 3 more stacks, we're gonna end up having 5 CP and 6 stacks. And in that case, we either force a 5 CP finisher, especially, and that's bad, especially when we're outside of crack shot window. Inside of crack shot window, that's fine, but a 5 CP finisher outside of crack shot window is really bad. We either do that, or we pistol shot at 5 CP, which in turn, we are losing combo points for nothing, because we could have just used our pistol shot spend the Fender Hammer stacks at 3 CP. So in short, following this rule is going to avoid ourselves to put ourselves in a bad situation. And that's pretty much it. We made it. I know the guide is a lot to take in, but hopefully you guys find it helpful. I know I kind of promised to explain how Road the Bones buffs work. Um, in the back end uh, earlier or you know somewhere in the video I did promise that but I think at this point the video is already longer than it should be and I think it's just gonna be too much um, if you are really interested uh, let me know leave a comment in the comment section and if we have you know we have more people or I feel like there's enough people that want to see that uh, I will make a separate video on it, I promise. And yeah, and special thanks to my GM Trinix. He do all the editing of this VOD for me. Um, without him, this is gonna be extremely boring, I can assure you, because I don't do any of those at all. So big credits to him. And also big shout out to the theory crafters of the road discord they did more work than anyone else in term when it comes to um developing outlaws rotation figuring out talents and so on without them the guide wouldn't be even possible and lastly if you like the video like and subscribe to my channel or follow me on twitch or leave a comment or if you have any questions or I'm not making anything clear in the video, feel free to make uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section as well. I will try my best to answer them. And or you can follow me on Twitch and ask me questions when I'm streaming. And that's it. I will see you guys next time. 
have fun and enjoy our law. See ya.